This video will discuss residual entropy in thermodynamics. So sometimes we get the following result. We get that for a, su a substance, if we calculate the molar entropy from, say, some type of statistical mechanics model, and we compare that to the experimental entropy that we might obtain from calorimetry, for example, we find that the calculated entropy is greater than the experimental entropy from calorimetry. So we're going to define a quantity called the residual entropy, and this is going to be the difference between our calculated entropy and the experimental molar entropy. So let's see where this comes from now. So the third law of thermodynamics, we assume that the entropy of a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin is zero. So if we look at something like carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide is a diatomic molecule. There's a very small dipole which points from the oxygen towards the carbon. So a perfect crystal of this, which would be the energetic ground state, would be all of these molecules in adjacent lattice sites perfectly aligned with one another. So this would be a perfect crystal, and at zero Kelvin this would have zero entropy. So what happens here is at zero Kelvin, CO, carbon monoxide, doesn't form this kind of a perfect crystal. The actual crystal is fairly random in its organization for what's pointing up and what's pointing down. So if we calculate the residual entropy of, of CO, this shouldn't be CO2, this should be CO. All right, the residual entropy of CO is 4.7 joules per mole Kelvin. All right, so let's take a little bit of a model and see if we can predict a value that gets pretty close to this. So let's say that for each of these individual CO molecules, let's say that they were degenerate, uh, whether it points up or down. It's not really degenerate because the dipole does give it a difference in energy, but let's assume that they're all equal in energy. What would be the entropy that results from the configurations of, of all of these molecules? So if it was just randomly assigned, the degeneracy of, of this ground state would be 2 to the n, because each individual molecule can point up or down, and the degeneracy is a product of the degeneracy for each individual molecule. So there are two to, n, two to the n possible ways we can arrange this crystal. Two configurations each, two to the n for the whole system. So the entropy of this would be Kb, Boltzmann constant, times natural log of the degeneracy, which would be Kb log 2 to the n, which we could factor out of the natural log as nk natural log of 2. And we know that the number of particles times the Boltzmann constant is equal to the number of moles times the gas constant, so r log 2. And the molar entropy is the entropy divided by the number of moles. So nr log 2 divided by n is just r log 2. So the molar entropy we would expect from this random configuration would be the gas constant r times the natural log of 2. So that's 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times 0 0.693. That would be 5.8 joules per mole Kelvin. So the entropy of just arranging these CO molecules randomly is approximately 1.2 times the actual observed residual entropy. So what this suggests is that the organization of this CO crystal is about 85% random. So some of them do align to minimize the repulsions of their dipoles to get the kind of favorable alignment there. But it, for the most part, the dipole's so small that about 80, 85% of them organize themselves randomly. But this type of a simple model for what this residual entropy is does a pretty good job of predicting why there's this discrepancy between statistical mechanics, which just calculates the absolute value of entropy, and our experimental, experimental calorimetry result, which assumed that the entropy at zero Kelvin was zero. Okay, another example could be um, deuterated methane, CH3D, where one of the four hydrogens has a uh, neutron in its nucleus. The molar residual entropy in this system is 11.7 .7 joules per mole Kelvin. So you can see here that for this methane, if it's in a solid methane crystal, there are four possible ways you could arrange each methane molecule. 
So you could have the deuterium in position 1, 2, 3, or 4. So if we do the same type of thing here, the molar entropy of, uh, of arranging these randomly would be Boltzmann constant divided by number of moles, natural log 4 to the n, or nk over n log 4, or nr over n log 4, which gives us r log 4. So the molar entropy of arranging them randomly would be 8.314 joules per mole kelvin times natural log of 4 is 1.386. And that gives us 11.5 joules per mole kelvin. So once again, the entropy, the molar entropy of arranging these randomly is about 98% of that residual entropy. So there, once again, it accounts for about 98% of the residual entropy. So why is it that it doesn't account for it exactly? Well, we're assuming that there's no energetic difference between having a deuterium here or having a hydrogen there. And for the most part, that's a pretty good approximation. But in fact, if you look, if you study the quantum mechanics playlist uh, deeply and you look at the vibrations of molecules, you'll find that the deuterium weighs more than the hydrogen. And as a result, what happens is the average bond length of a carbon deuterium bond is slightly shorter than the average bond length of a carbon hydrogen bond. So there's a very, very slight uh, shortening of the bond length of the deuterium here meaning that there's a very slight change in the energy based off of the uh, different position of the deuterium. But that energy is very, very small because as we can see, the methane crystal prefers to arrange itself pretty much randomly, but there is that very, very tiny uh, energy difference that results from our choice of position for that deuterium.